Good morning, everyone. Today, let's talk a little bit about data governance and what is the need for data governance in large organizations. Essentially, data governance is the guardrails that will help you protect the data from bad actors or even increasing the quality of. So establishing the ground rules, for example, policies, procedures, and processes to manage the data as part of data governance. You can also derive metrics that will help you with the data disposal, data collection, as well as data archival. What else does data governance do? Data governance establishes quality and security of the data and also have a very controlled process for any data updates. Typical data updates are either you're updating the data, you're deleting the records, or you're actually modifying the records. The other um, use cases for which data governance is essential is because the data can be used by various business functions. Talk about sales and marketing, just management, dashboards, procurement, compliance. Sometimes it can extend to legal compliance as well, et cetera, et cetera. So in a nutshell, data governance is nothing but establishing the guardrails to protect your data. So let us look at why do we need this data governance? A lot of people who are not um, into data governance might think it's a very process oriented job, but actually if you do not do data governance, there are a lot of challenges you can face in your organization. So let's look at why we need the data governance. Number one, high quality data. Obviously, cleaning the data is an expensive process. Understanding the data is an expensive process, as well as maintaining the data, like updating or archiving the data is also an expensive process. So in order to maintain the quality of the data, you do need some governance processes in place. Regulation and compliance is very important, especially if you're in sectors such as finance and healthcare, they are more regulated than others, but not necessarily that you have to give it less importance if it is some other organization or some other sector. Um, and also for establishing your business insights. So talk about dashboards, right? If you are a publicly traded company, you want to have your finances in, in place and not be erroneous at all. Um, and data governance processes helps with that. Cost controls, sometimes, you know, cleaning the data could actually overshoot your budget. So ensuring that you have protective guardrails around your data will ensure that you are on top of your budget. Reducing risk, we all know bad data or erroneous data can introduce a risk to your overall organization as such. What does a data governance model look like? So a data governance model can include the master data management, metadata management, as well as data quality. It includes establishing data access rules. Who has access to this data? Obviously at a database level, it would be typically technology folks like database administrators, data miners, et cetera. But the data when exposed through dashboards or reports, it could be accessed through other people in your organization, but even then, would external parties have access to it? Obviously not. So you want to make sure your data access rules are in place. And if you're in a sector like healthcare, it is even more important because of HIPAA regulation and so on and so forth. Next is data security and privacy also spoke about PII data. So for example, if you have an HR system and you're collecting date of birth of your employees as well as addresses and uh, you know location-based information, also including social security information, data privacy is of utmost importance. You want to make sure no other personnel in your organization has access to this privacy-related data information. And security, obviously, you want to make sure data at rest and data in uh, motion is encrypted so that um, bad actors do not hack into your data. 
reporting needs, obviously, we spoke about, again, the dashboards that are meant for reporting, whether it's for regulatory purposes or just to have a view of uh, what products are doing well, what services are bringing in revenue. It's very important to establish your data governance model. And then use cases for data analytics and data science. I would be remiss if I don't mention the data is used for data science projects as well as for machine learning. So establishing a data governance model is very, very helpful. So what can you think of when you think of data governance model? We come back to people, process, and procedure, the three Ps. What do, uh, what do I mean by this? People, you have data stakeholders, compliance officers, data stewards, and this could be a combination of your business unit um, people, team members, as well as your technology team members. What are some of the processes? So establishing the roadmap of what the data looks like for various business unit. What sort of budget do you have for it? What is the design of your data? What does your data model look like? How do you deploy any database changes? How do you govern them? How do you monitor, measure, and report the data? What else do you mean by procedures? The procedures could include the metrics of the data. How often is the data modified? What is the frequency of the updates of the data? And uh, how often are there errors reported in the data and so on and so forth? What are some control me mechanisms? We already spoke about access control. There can be additional controls like who could archive the data, who could delete the data, et cetera. And some of the data rules, standards, and policies, and last but not the least, a security and privacy are super important. So hopefully this gives you an overview of what does the data governance model look like. Good luck with your data journey. <laughs>